Welcome to the fourth video in our Chemical Quantities and Mole Concept series. Here's our mole roadmap. It shows the conversion factors that we are using. It is our guide through all sorts of mole conversion or stoichiometry problems in our next unit. In the last video, we were looking at mole to mass or mass to mole conversions. In this video, we are going to look a little bit closer at converting from representative particles to moles or vice versa. And then we're going to go all the way from one corner to the other. So all the way from mass to particle or particle to mass. Now, anytime you hear the term representative particle, that's just an umbrella designation that stands for whatever it is you're counting. So if we're counting atoms, that's our particle. If we're counting molecules, that's our particle. We could count formula units if we're talking about ionic substances like sodium chloride or magnesium nitrate. If we get into more advanced chemistry, we can count things like ions or electrons. So here's a little learning check to see if you've been paying attention in the earlier videos. If we have one mole of sodium, how many atoms is that? Well, one mole of anything contains Avogadro's number of that thing. So one mole of sodium contains Avogadro's number of sodium atoms. What if we have two moles of sodium or some other substance? Now how many atoms are we talking about? Well, if you can't do the math in your head, your calculator certainly can multiply Avogadro's number by 2 and obtain the result 1.2 times 10 to the 24th power. But now let's do the reverse problem. How many moles contain 4.816 times 10 to the 24th atoms? The answer is not C. Who knows? Instead, you set this up as a conversion problem. We'll write what we have on the left-hand side, 4.816 times 10 to the 24th atoms. And just to make this a little easier to visualize, I'm going to put that as a numerator over 1. And I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. 1 mole contains Avogadro's number of atoms. The atoms on top and bottom will cancel. And if you're careful to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in parentheses whenever you divide, you should come up with a result of 8. There are 8 moles of atoms in 4.816 times 10 to the 24th power atoms. So let's focus just a little bit more on that type of conversion. If you look at your mole roadmap in the lower right hand corner, we can convert between moles and representative particles. We can also convert from representative particles to moles. We can do both directions using the conversion factors shown on the map. We just have to supply the specific substances. Suppose, for example, we have one million carbon dioxide molecules. That sounds like a lot. How many moles of carbon dioxide do you have if you have one million carbon dioxide molecules? Well, if we look at our mole roadmap, we're starting at particles. Molecule is a type of particle. We want to convert to mole. And so the conversion factor we need says one mole over Avogadro's number of particles. In our case, that's going to be molecules. So let's set our problem up. On the left, we'll write what we are given, 1 million molecules of carbon dioxide. I'm going to abbreviate that using scientific notation, 1 times 10 to the 6th instead of 1 million. And instead of the word molecule, I'm going to put an abbreviation, QLs. That's just to save space on my PowerPoint slide. I want to write on the right what I want, which is moles of carbon dioxide. I need a conversion factor, which the mole roadmap supplies, except that I have to give the specifics. I need to put the substance and the particle. So whenever I write this out, I'm going to put molecules and 
moles of carbon dioxide. Now the molecules on top and bottom will cancel each other. And if I do the math correctly, I come out with actually a very tiny number, 1.66 times 10 to the minus 18th power. That's a decimal 17 zeros, then a 166. So even though a million sounds like a lot to you, on the scale of the mole, it's minuscule. But the answer is 1 million molecules of carbon dioxide is 1.66 times 10 to the minus 18th moles of carbon dioxide. Let's do another problem. Let's say for some reason that you want to know how many water molecules are in five moles of water. Well, we're given five moles of water. We'll write that on the left. On the right, we want to know how many molecules of water. We need a conversion factor. Again, if we look on our mole roadmap, we're starting at moles. We want to go to particles. The conversion factor says Avogadro's number of particles over one mole. I supply the specific information in my problem. So I'm going to put Avogadro's number of water molecules in the numerator, one mole of water in the denominator. The moles of water on top and bottom will cancel. I'm left with five times Avogadro's number of molecules of water over one. Do the math and your calculator will tell you it's 3.01 times 10 to the 24th power molecules of water. Now, even though it's not necessary in real life very often, occasionally we do want to know how many atoms or molecules we're dealing with, and so we'll need to get down in that right-hand corner. But more often than not, we are going to be weighing things as a substitute for counting. So let's go all the way from mass to particles and vice versa in a couple of example problems. We can go from particles to, mole, or to moles to mass, or from mass to moles to particle. We'll have to do two conversion factors instead of just one. So we'll look for two equivalences, and just make sure that as you go along, you're following the mole roadmap, and mark your units out on top and bottom as you go, and that way you can keep up with where you are. Again, don't forget in these types of problems that a representative particle means anything that it is that is being counted. So if the question is about atoms, that's a particle. If it's about molecules, that's a particle. If it says formula units, that means it's an ionic substance. And so you just look at the formula and that's a formula unit for that particular problem. So here's an example. Suppose you have 1.204 times 10 to the 24th atoms of carbon. How many grams of carbon do you have? We'll write what we have on the left. We are given 1.204 times 10 to the 24th power atoms of carbon. Write what we want to find on the right, grams of carbon. At our mole roadmap, we're starting at number of atoms. We want to find mass. The mole roadmap tells us to first convert to moles and then from moles to mass. So first we'll use a conversion factor of one mole over Avogadro's number. Then we'll use a second conversion factor, a second fraction, where we use the molar mass of carbon over one mole. Again, when we do our problem, we have to keep in mind that the mole roadmap is for all sorts of problems. What we need to do is write down the specific information for our particular problem. So if we look up the uh, mole roadmap and it says 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, but we want atoms, let's write down atoms instead. So we will put down 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon, and that equals one mole of carbon. 
Now we're at moles because the atoms of carbon are going to cancel out. We want grams, so we need to keep going. To convert to grams, the mole roadmap tells me to put molar mass on top and one mole on bottom. I supply the specific information. I'm going to write the molar mass of carbon, which on the periodic table is 12.011. So I'm going to put 12.011 grams of carbon over one mole of carbon. Now mole of carbon on top and bottom will cancel, and I'm left with 1.204 times 10 to the 24th power times 12.011 grams of carbon over Avogadro's number. Make sure you either enter Avogadro's number in engineering notation, where it will count it as a single number, or you put Avogadro's number in parentheses. That way your calculator will count that as a, a single number instead of as two different numbers. The answer, 24.02 grams of carbon. If I have 1.2 times 10 to the 24th carbon atoms, I've got 24 grams of carbon, and vice versa. Let's do the reverse type of problem. If I have 120 grams of glucose, how many glucose molecules do I have? I'm given 120 grams of glucose. If you don't want to write the formula out, that's fine. Just write glucose or just write GLUC or something like that. I want to know how many molecules of glucose that is, so I write that over on the right. I look at my... I'm starting at grams. I want to go to molecules, which is a type of particle. That means I first have to convert to moles, and then from moles to particles. So I'm going to use the conversion factor one mole over molar mass, and a second conversion factor of Avogadro's number over one mole. So, my first conversion factor says one mole over molar mass. I supply the specifics. In this case, I want the molar mass of glucose. That's six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. If I look that up and add those together, one mole of glucose weighs 180.16 grams. So there's my conversion factor. Grams on top and bottom will cancel, leave me with moles of glucose, I'm in the middle of my mole roadmap. I want to be in the lower right hand corner. I want molecules. So I've got to keep going. So to go from moles to molecules, I have to multiply by Avogadro's number of particles over one mole. In this case, my particle is a molecule. So I'm going to write molecules there and I'm going to write the specific substance, molecules of glucose. Moles of glucose on top and bottom will cancel. I'm left with 120 times Avogadro's number of molecules of glucose on top and 180.16 in the denominator. I could rearrange the equation to look like this if I wanted to, and that way I could get an estimate because I can see that 120 over 180 is about two thirds. So the answer is about two thirds of Avogadro's number, which is about four times 10 to the 23rd power. And in fact, if you do it in your calculator and round off the three significant figures, it's 4.01 times 10 to the 23rd power. I must write molecules of glucose. Don't just put a number. A number by itself is meaningless. You need a number, a unit of measurement, or a quantity being counted, and the specific substance for this particular problem to have a complete answer. See if you can do this one on your own. Imagine that a certain laboratory procedure requires 0.2 moles of magnesium. How many grams of magnesium would you mass or weigh on the balance? Why don't you pause the video, work out the problem, and then restart the video to see the solution. In the solution, you should be able to see on the periodic table Molar mass is 24.305, that means grams per mole. Mole roadmap, 
This is not a full mass to particle problem. Instead, it just goes from moles to mass. I hope you caught that, uh, that little trick that I played on you there. This is a one-step conversion problem. I need the conversion factor of molar mass over one mole. So I'm given 0.2 moles of magnesium. I want to find grams of magnesium. The mole roadmap tells me to put one mole on bottom and molar mass on top. The molar mass of magnesium is 24.305 grams. Moles of magnesium on top and bottom will cancel. 0.2 times 24.3 divided by 1 is 4.86, rounded off the three significant figures. I have to put the units and the substance, so the correct answer is 4.86 grams of magnesium. Why don't you pause the video and try one more practice problem, see if you are on track. How many formula units are in? 610 grams of cobalt chloride. Cobalt 2 chloride. If you look on your mole roadmap, grams is in the lower left hand corner, and we want formula units because this is an ionic substance. So we are doing a full mass to particle conversion. We need two conversion factors. We'll write what we are given on the left hand side, 610 grams of cobalt 2 chloride. To convert to moles, I want one mole over molar mass. I need to write the specifics, so the molar mass of cobalt 2 chloride is 129.839 grams. So I'm going to write one mole of cobalt 2 chloride over 129.8 grams of cobalt 2 chloride. Grams on top and bottom are going to cancel and give me moles. Now that I'm at moles, I want to go down to particles. I need to multiply by Avogadro's number over one mole. In this case, I want formula units, so instead of representing particles, I'm going to write formula units of cobalt 2 chloride over one mole of cobalt 2 chloride. The moles of cobalt 2 chloride on top and bottom will cancel. And I'm left with 610 times 1 times Avogadro's number of formula units of cobalt 2 chloride over 1 times 129.839 times 1. Do the math and you get 2.8283 times 10 to the 24th formula units of cobalt 2 chloride. That's too many significant figures. I started with three, so I should probably end with three. So the correct answer would be 2.83 times 10 to the 24th formula units of cobalt 2 chloride. It's time for you to practice on your own, so if you have the associated practice sheet, please get cracking on that. And if not, then I'm sure you will be able to find some practice problems somewhere. Good luck. Please re-watch the video if you need to.